I'm Nick Cook, I'm the technical advisor to Southern Cross Gold. What we're going to do now is walk through the geology of our Sunday Creek project here in Victoria. Just an overview as to where we are, Victoria, southeastern state of Australia, and uh, we have three main project areas, Sunday Creek, Roo, and Redcastle. And the one we'll be focusing on here is known as Sunday Creek, about 80 kilometres to the north northeast of Melbourne City. In terms of regional geology, Victoria is dominated by north south trending belts of sediments with some intrusive granitoid rocks and associated volcanics. And importantly for us, we are going to be discussing this area here, Sunday Creek, to the east of the small town of Kilmore. Also of note, uh, Fosterville Mine out to the northeast and Costafield here near the small town of Heathcote. Zooming in a little, Sunday Creek here is in the south, just north of the Mount Disappointment Granite. And we'll zoom in a little more into the aeromagnetic image here covering the permits. Sunday Creek is located just north of the Mount Disappointment Granite. And here on the aeromagnetic image, you can see the granite to the south. You can see these metamorphic rocks to the north, east and west, and they are cut by northwest trending faults. And these faults and metamorphic rocks associated with the Mount Disappointment granite are the host rocks to the mineralization at Sunday Creek, in particular in the southwest area here, known as Clondenane. But it extends for over 11 kilometers out to the northeast and is associated with a dike that was formed at about the same time as the emplacement of the Mount Disappointment granite. In terms of the topography, quite hilly, north drainage to out to the Murray-Darling system. We conducted a soil survey with over a thousand samples collected across the extent of the permit covering from the southwest corner here known as Clombenane up through the Leviathan out towards the intersection with the Reedy Creek Goldfield. And you can see these anomalous zones developed within the uh, mineralized rocks. But uh, also interestingly, there are lots and lots of other veins recorded here uh, from our interpretation of the LIDAR data. Significantly across this 11 kilometer trend, only a small part has actually been drilled in the southwest corner, which is where we're focusing the discussions today. Undrilled across the 11 kilometer trend out to the northeast. Earlier, we discussed the north south belts of rocks in Victoria. These commenced in the Cambrian and go right through to the early Devonian. Significantly, there are four different phases of uh, deformation within these zones, and three of them include uh, gold mineralization. The significantly earlier deposits known and in around Bendigo and Ballarat have now been overtaken in importance by the nine so-called epizonal systems across Victoria. So Fosterville, Costafield and uh, Sunday Creek, ours. And we are in control of three of the nine of these epizonal deposits across Victoria. Zooming into the Sunday Creek project, it's dominated by an east to northeast trend dike that is mineralized across the length of the Sunday Creek prospect. It starts at Christina down in the southwest and extends up to the Apollo shafts and workings in the northeast, but is open, as we've said before, for the 10 kilometres out to the northeast. We'll come to the discussion of the three dimensional geometry using a leapfrog model. What do the rocks look like? They are siltstones, bedded siltstones and locally pyritic, although this pyrite is actually the alteration associated with the mineralization. The bedding is locally graded, so we can work out which way up the sediments are. And these are the host rocks into which the diorite dikes were emplaced. And in this photo of drill core here, you can actually see diorite dikes in breaches associated with their emplacement into sediments. The alteration associated with the dikes is an important part of the story in providing reactive rocks to the mineralization. And these dikes occur down to as little as two centimeters thick. 
but you can see the pale alteration margins around the dike. And if you look very closely here, you can even see the dike coming into one of these veins, which is carbonate plus pyrite in the veins. And those veinlets are important in the, a source of sulfur for the later mineralization. Going further into the story, we can see in the lower left here, a tiny bit of dike intruding into the sediments. But what's more important here are these quartz carbonate veins, which have gold and also visible sibnite here in this image. These unusual looking fractures cutting across from lower right to upper left are actually the alteration and sulfides associated with the emplacement of the dike. The veins largely occur in altered sediments and within the dike rocks, but locally extend a few metres out into unaltered meta sediments. Looking at the alteration in the sediments and the dike rocks, so in this image here, we have dike rocks and sediments here in this light brown colour and a stibnite rich vein in quartz carbonate rocks cutting across both units. And the, what's happened here, it's blue because the iron carbonate has been stained to detect the presence in both rock types and in the vein. And you can see that there is iron carbonate present in the matrix of the dike, but not in the sediments. And this is an important reactive component in the mineralization process at Sunday Creek. Going to the most important things of all, results in the drill holes. So in each case here, gold and antimony. So gold in grams per tonne and antimony in percent. And this is from drill hole 33, recently reported, and spectacular gold grades. And not only spectacular gold grades over short distances, over quite continuous um, intersections. And these rocks here are largely altered meta sediments. And you can see a bunch of Quartz carbonate veins that have gold and some stibnite here cutting across the altered bedding in the sediments. Our spectacular result here, 119 grams associated with 0.7% antimony. There are two real styles of mineralization in this system. There is this quartz carbonate gold stibnite veins in these parallel sided sub-vertical structures. And there's a second set where the rocks are dominated by antimony. So in here, up to 11% antimony in the sample. And there's so much antimony here as stibnite that is actually forming a breccia. And these breccia-rich units dip steeply to moderately to the southwest, as opposed to the quartz carbonate veins, with, which are gold-rich, which are sub-vertical. Looking in detail at some of the gold, and stibnite relationships, here is a dike in the upper right, which is altered, but also contains clasts of the surrounding meta sediments and a quartz carbonate vein with visible gold and centerline stibnite here. Zooming in even more, you can see stained iron carbonate with pyrite and visible gold within this quartz vein. So this is one of these sub-vertical quartz carbonate gold rich veins with stibnite coming in apparently later than the formation of the vein. And one of these low angle or west-southwest dipping stibnite veins cutting meta sediments. And you can see multiple stages of veining in this image with quartz carbonate veins in one orientation, stibnite rich veins are parallel to it, and then stibnite veins cutting the mineralization here almost at 90 degrees to the uh, sub-vertical quartz carbonate veins. In terms of alteration minerals, especially sulfides, the alteration is dominated by pyrite, but as the gold grade becomes greater, especially over a couple of grams, we start to see arsenopyrite being developed in the wall rocks and adjacent rocks to the quartz carbonate veining. A great sign for mineralization for people logging the core is the presence of visible arsenopyrite. Zooming in even more down to less than a millimetre or a millimetre field of view here in a polished section of rock. So we're looking under the microscope here and in the bottom part of the image is stibnite and then there is a mixture of gold here, brightly reflective material within quartz and carbonate. And unusual reaction textures here with the gold and carbonate 
lying wholly enclosed within quartz and then completely surrounded by stibnite. The stibnite also tends to take over the rocks and fill all the grain boundaries between the different minerals. And this is evident both in uh, hand specimen. So when you're looking at the drill core, you can see this process starting to take off. And these cross-cutting structures eventually become quite large veins and is the start of the brecciation process where the rocks become stibnite dominated. So in terms of what we understand at Sunday Creek, the evolution of the Sunday Creek mineralizing system commenced with late Silurian and early Devonian bedded siltstones. And these rocks were folded and faulted. And following that, there was a number of different stages of dike emplacement into the same structures. And there's both coarse grained and fine grained dikes. And when the dike was in place, there was some brecciation of the country rock. And some of that brecciation has dike as matrix and some has quartz and carbonate. Alteration took place at the same stage as the emplacement of the dike. And so we get the pale carbonate, white mica, pyrite rocks in terms of alteration of the dike, and then the metasediments around it become slightly brown to yellowish brown, and that is a white mica quartz pyrite alteration in the surrounding rocks. Subsequent to that, it's the development of subvertical carbonate quartz gold veins with the arsenopyrite developed, and then we get stibnite developed the stibnite also utilizes the earlier quartz carbonate veins, but then develops its own vein set and includes additional gold into the system when they, and they dip to the southwest, but about 60 to 70 degrees to the southwest. Subsequent to that, there has been a long period of weathering, but most of the rocks are relatively fresh by 50 meters or so from the surface. So how does the mineralization story at Sunday Creek fit in regionally. Just going back to the regional view here of the geology uh, with Sunday Creek in the southern area of the map, Costafield near Heathcote here and Fosterville out to the northwest. These are all part of the nine epizonal fields that we discussed. So these epizonal fields are shallower form gold than the standard orogenic systems. So we're talking about 250 degrees and five to six kilometers from the surface. And significantly, the alteration at Sunday Creek appears very similar to what is described at Fosterville. And I think that's best illustrated by looking at one rock type. This rock, for example, gives the story in many ways that is consistent across the epizonal fields of Victoria. And if you understand that iron bearing carbonate is a key component of the gold mineralizing system, in addition to what you would call a structurally appropriate host rock, in this case, an altered rock that is able to form uh, good veins. And within these veins, the quartz carbonate and gold and stibnite are all associated with uh, cracking open of the rocks during this late Devonian or Tabarabaran orogeny. The presence of the iron carbonate in the rocks is a reactive component. And the iron will end up destabilizing gold in solution and precipitating gold. The presence of arsenopyrite is a classic alteration indicator, mineralization indicator of gold in these systems in addition to the way in which we see stages of formation of different vein sets in the history of this, these systems. So they're not one off, the veins are open multiple times and it tends to be that golden and stibnite are in two slightly separate parts of the system. You tend to see earlier gold with arsenopyrite followed by stibnite mineralization. And this is uh, frequently seen both at Costa Field and throughout the Fosterville system. Indeed, many of these systems are zoned so that some of the stibnite rich parts are perhaps not the highest grade gold. So there can be improvement of the gold grades as the, you become deeper in the system. And that's partly because gold and arsenopyrite tend to be formed at a slightly higher temperature than the stibnite plus gold parts of the system. Fosterville, Costerfield, and Sunday Creek 
are all part of the same styles of mineralizing system dominated by gold and antimony, including early carbonate alteration associated with arsenopyrite. 